Hi, so this is number two of the SOA FM sample questions. So let's start off with, okay, so Catherine uh, deposits 100 into an account at the beginning of each four year period for 40 years. Okay, so the first thing I would start off with is a timeline. So she deposits 100 into the account, and especially at the beginning of every four years. So there will be one occurring at four and another interval, another payment of 100 occurring at eight. All up until 40 years. Now, the account credits interest at an annual effective interest rate of I. The accumulated account in the account at the end of 40 years is X, which is five times the accumulated amount in the account at the end of four, four, 20 years. Well, the question is, how will we be able to find the accumulated amount in the account at the end of 40 years? Well, we see here that since the account credits interest at an annual effective interest rate of I, from 100 to time four, it would grow by the effective interest rate of one plus i to the four, especially at time eight when it's one plus i to the eight, and so on and so, so forth until it reaches one plus i to the 40. So, this looks as if it's something as a geometric series, right? Like the exponents are growing within a certain amount of time. So we're gonna have to use the geometric series formula in relation to the accumulated amount in the count. So it would be first term minus first omitted term over one minus common ratio. So the first term would be one plus i to the four. And remember, we're only focusing on the accumulated amount in the account. So that is why we're only focusing on the accumulation factors of uh, when Catherine deposits 100 into an account. So the geometric series of the effective interest rates of accumulation of, so the first term is one plus i to the four. The first omitted term, if another four years would have continued, would be in an effective interest rate of one plus i to the 44. Now, then it would be one over the common ratio of one plus i to the four because we see here that the effective interest rates are always growing by one plus i to the four. I uh, solve this by usually taking what is occurring at a time uh, that comes after the uh, initial time or whichever works best. And I, for example, take one plus i to the eight over one plus i to the four, and I get one plus i to the four, which is the common ratio pertaining to uh, each one of these relationships of time intervals that are right next to each other. Now, this is denoted x, okay? And it is five times the accumulated amount in the account at the end of uh, 20 years. So it'd be five times, one plus i to the four minus the first omitted term of 20 years. So if the four year interval would have continued after 20 years, it would be at time 24 instead over one minus the common ratio. Now we're able to simplify. We see here that the denominators over here are equal to each other. So let's cross these out. Now, uh, we see here that there is a common ratio of one plus i to the four on each of these, but 
the problem is that there is still the effective interest rates within these terms. And on top of that, there are so many exponents. So we need to find a technique to uh, figure out how to simplify this in an easy and clearer way as possible. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take the common uh, term of one plus i to the four, and we're gonna denote it as a single variable of x, or p or q, however you wanna call it. Now, we could substitute this x into the, these equations. So it would be x minus x to the 11, because x is already 1 plus i to the 4. So 4 times 11 would be 44, equals to 5 times x minus x to the 6, because 6 times 4 is 24. Now we can distribute the five. And then we can also combine like terms. So this could be a negative four X minus X to the 11 plus five to the x6. So this looks something as a quadratic equation, but it kind of looks messy. We need a, a substitute x out of the equation. So let's clean it up a bit. So it will become negative x to the 10 plus 5x to the 5 minus 4 equals zero. Now, we could have solved this using the quadratic equation, but the problem is that it's not in the standard form of uh, ax squared plus bx minus c. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna try to expand this middle term so we could factor out uh, terms or whatnot. So I use the x strategy. So I take a uh, five as the middle b variable. And then I take the a and c variables of negative one and negative four and then multiply them with each other, which is four. Now I find two uh, terms that uh, one add up to five, but also multiply to by four. So it, they are one and four. So we're able to expand this equation to negative 10, x to the 10 plus x plus 4x. Don't forget the x. 4x to the fifth minus 4. Now we could factor it by separating the two. We could take out x to the 5 here. We could also uh, take out uh, negative four. Then we are left with x to the five minus four times negative x to the five plus one. Now we can set these equal to zero. Well, for the first term, 
we then just do x to the 5 equals 4. For the second term, we end up getting x to the 5 equals 1. Okay. Now, we remembered that this is what we're looking for here. So if we were to solve for x in this part, we would do 4 to the 1 over 5, and we would get 1.3195, and so on and so forth for this part. And then for here, we would get 1 for this part of the equation. Now, if I were to substitute one as x, we would, uh, we would end up getting i equal to zero. And then once we get i equal to zero, we would try to plug it into the original equation of x. And we wouldn't get a satisfactory answer because everything would end up as zero. Because why would the accumulated account at the end of 40 years be zero? It would not make sense. That is why usually when we're solving these quadratic equations, we always want to find the um, answer that is the most positive at least, or is positive, or the one that gives us the substantial answer. Or in other cases, it really depends on what the question is asking. But in this scenario, it's uh, best to choose uh, this value of 1.3195. So once we do that, we're going to set it equal to 1 plus i to the 4. And we'll solve. So I do, I would do 1.3195 to the 1 over 4. Minus 1. And we get I would equal to uh, 0 0.0717718. So now we're able to use that i to plug it back into the original equation of x over here. So now we're going to erase this. Let me put this up a notch. Okay. So now. Once we get the i, we're substituting back into the x equation. So remember, i is point, equal to 0 0.071771856. I always like to pull off the decimals just in case of accuracy. Minus, again, blah, 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 to the 44 over 1 minus 1.0717, blah, 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 to the 4. So we'll solve. So 1.0717171856 to the 4 minus 1.0717171856 to the 44. Okay, which is negative 19.79123 divided by. Let's put this here for a sec. Divided by one minus 
1.07177 to the 4. Is this not? 0 0.319490859. Now we solve for negative 19.7912341919 divided by negative 0.319490859, which is 61.9. And note that these factors have been accumulating from the initial deposit of 100. So I would have just did 100 times 1 plus i to the 4 minus 100 this and that. But I wanted to simplify it and just focus on the effective interest rates instead. But what did have to happen here is that we, we had to multiply or we had to factor out 100 in this case. So we take this value times 100. And we end up getting uh, 6194.61, which is E.